And now it's the time come to say welcome, welcomen. Very good to see so many interested visitors here for this event and we're very happy to open our new exhibition with Talamadani here, Rip Image. And um, we have uh, three persons to speak here tonight and uh, it is of course the artist, Tala, together with the curators, Joa Jungberg and Andreas Nilsson. This exhibition was uh, actually happening already in Malmö uh, some time ago and uh, it was very well received by visitors and by critics. And now we have it here in Stockholm, which looks a bit the same, but totally different. It's very amazing, very interesting. And it's a proof of uh, an artist who is able to rearrange and work with her images in a, a way that always becomes interesting for us to see. So we're very happy that you're here. And we're very excited about this uh, discussion tonight. And. Um, after the discussion, you're welcome to visit the show, visit the collection, and stay here until 8 o'clock. After 8, we have the bar open, and you can stay as long as you please. And have a very good evening here. And now I leave the word over to Tala, and to Juva, and to Andreas. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Who should start? <laughs> no, I, I could start. So. Um, <laughs> yeah, so happy to see a, a lot of people here tonight. Yeah. And uh, as uh, Anne Sophie said, we opened this exhibition Rip Image in February in uh, in Malmo at Moderna Museet. And uh, after that, I think we'd done some thinking regarding installations and groupings of paintings and also the architecture for the second edition that we opened tonight here. And uh, I think we made some, uh, for us, uh, clear changes. Yeah. Maybe it can be interesting just also to say that, um, well, this exhibition is the most comprehensive exhibition that has been presented of Talamadani's work so far. So I think it's amazing that we can show it here at Modern Museet, both in Malmö and in Stockholm. Uh, and it's also uh, the first time that her different series of paintings, animations and works together, uh, works on paper are brought together to be experienced as a whole uh, and in dialogue with one another. And because um, even though you, Tala, work very much in series, uh, they cross into each other and they, since you graduated from uh, Art Academy in 2006, you have developed this different series of work, but that all of them has built on this kind of parallel reality, a universe of its own, uh, which is uh, populated by these men that are also, that has continued to be your characters. Uh, so just to tap into what Andreas was saying, I think that uh, it has been extra great to be able to represent this exhibition because uh, in already in Malmö, we decided not to hang the different series uh, separately, but actually to break them up and mix them in order to really embrace uh, the opportunity of dialogue that was between the different works. And uh, being able to do it once more uh, has pushed us to, to really take that further, I think. Yeah, um, it's been an amazing experience for me, because I think as an artist, you work in the studio, um, not always having the full view of uh, how five years looks together, but uh, sort of going between looking at, at this, uh, this viewpoint and this viewpoint and having the Moderna Museet show both in Malmo and at the, in Stockholm has, been, has given me an opportunity to really see the last five years for myself and experience it uh, a very new way for myself as well and sort of become aware of certain things um, certain obsessions, let's say, that uh, are hard to shake off and sort of think about um, certain ways of working and how they, how, they, how they create meaning when you have all of them together. Um, 
we're talking a little bit abstractly now, and, yeah, and it would, of course, be yeah. clearly if when you when you see the show, uh, uh, it would become more clear. But uh, we've sort of begun the show with we haven't really used the chronological uh, chronological order to install the show, but we have started with the earliest works, uh, more or less, um, to give uh, an introduction, and then gone through and uh, very much made a mix of uh, different series. Um, maybe it can be an idea to sort of, we were thinking maybe we can uh, take you around the exhibition but being in this space and then you can have maybe some things of the what we have said here with you when you then see the show yeah. by yourself. Yeah. So maybe talk about Rip Image actually, yeah, the rip title. Uh, rip yeah. Image is, is the title of the exhibition and also one of the first paintings you see in the exhibition and one of the smallest I must say, uh, also one of the earliest. Yep. Here, um, in it you see a, a man holding up a, a mask of himself, more or less, and rips it apart. And I think, for me, it's uh, quite. Uh, it sums up parts of your uh, work in in that way that it's a kind of social acting, not voluntarily always, but how you how the men in these uh, paintings and in this world, as Joa says, uh, tries to break free, in a way, from uh, stereotypes and conventions of, it might be gender or uh, how we look at each other, I would say, and, uh, and maybe it, the twist here can also be that you only paint men, <laughs> that uh, you, you do, uh, destruct this, the conventions of mm. manly behavior, I would say. Uh, yeah, we could definitely address this uh, maybe at the beginning. Is um, I early on decided for a while just to omit women uh, from the paintings, more because it became very problematic for me to paint women. Uh, it seemed if I were to paint a kind of abstract shape, if I wanted her to be a f female figure, I, I would have to sort of give her a lot of hair or give her some breasts, and it would sort of sexualize the figure, and that's how it becomes a woman, is through her sexualization. And, and I wasn't interested in that, and I wasn't interested in the dialogue between the male and the females in that space. So I thought, okay, we'll omit the woman. Then after a while, the men sort of uh, were very happy just by themselves, in a sense. And, and, I, and I thought, um, I, the work, it does, it, it has different energy pools that uh, f sort of push it. And one of them is um, desire, in a sense. Sort of. So I think when you see also the whole show, the sort of generative energy that there is so much. Uh, I, I hope that you get the sort of sense of this high energy from the paintings. And this, I think, is a lot to do with somehow uh, the way I distill my desire uh, as a, as a sort of just a live being into the work. Um, and I was quite curious about sort of having these men be um, in a way, in a way, uh, creating a space for myself in the paintings of their environment, and I was part of it then. So you have sort of a lot of spaces, I think, in the world in general where women are a bit omitted, and so I thought it'd be interesting to have a world where, after you look around, like where are all the women? Where have the women gone? And you sort of get a sense of sort of omission of women in certain spaces. Um, and I also wasn't interested in caricaturizing the female figure. I was more interested in sort of um, allowing the man to go to the, the childlike the moment. Uh, again, in certain moments, though, however, the man is, uh, in certain moments, he does appear as just a stand-in for the human. So uh, between each works, we have 84 works here, I think. Um, they're not always, cons you know, they're, they're, there's not one position that's always stressed, let's say. But shall we talk a little bit what the, I mean, the, um, because these men that has been with you since 2006, uh, they are, and that has been the characters of your work and that you have uh, continued to work with, they are engaged in various, sometimes absurd, sometimes quite f unsettling activities and, and situations and and interacting with each other, quite often there appears, one of them appears more as a leader, whereas others appear quite submissive 
there is also some kind of erotic play in that. Yeah. But maybe to be a little bit more concrete, it can also be good to talk about specific paintings. I'm thinking maybe like in the first room, for example, uh, where you mentioned we have the earliest work, the very earliest series uh, that you made is called The Cake Man, where you see where a recurrent motive is actually a birthday cake, and you see these men interacting with this birthday cake uh, that somehow becomes a marker of a belonging to a group or a collective. It ceases to become only a birthday cake. You also see a small painting where a group of men gather around this birthday cake, and it seems like they have some kind of suspicious meeting or they are plotting something. Uh, and again, there is some kind of unsettling feeling and definitely I don't think the cake is there to, to be eaten to the coffee after the meeting. It's something else. It's sort of... Um, it's the, uh, you mentioned also earlier, it's, it's the cake in this series, the glue that holds the group together uh, and, and maybe it's the subject of the meeting rather. Do you want to? Yeah, and the cake, I, I thought it would be, as you say, a kind of a glue to, to have these men relate to each other. So that way, if they're, whether they're shoving in each other's faces or they're having their, it's, it's a way of, uh, for them to um, connect to, with each other. And I thought the birthday cake is sort of like the, uh, it's for children, so it takes them back to the child, like uh, it's a birthday cake, so you age, you grow, candles, you blow up the candles, you blow up yourself. So it had all these sort of different levels uh, and all the froth and all the sort of cream was also very, very sexual. So it had all these sort of levels that I could um, uh, inter play with or Im implicate the figures in. Um, there is also a man who has a, an image of a cake tattooed on his back. Yes, yeah, so it became yeah. sort of a club. I mean, we yeah. could have done a whole show just on the cake men. There is <laughs> sort of about maybe 80 paintings of just cake men. So that's another way that I, the, 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 um, it's a very, um, one work begets another work. So the imagination sort of run wild, runs for itself after a while. And, and I guess stylistically, I can talk a little bit about, uh, I, the paintings are about these guys and they are uh, in a childlike position and they're painted like childlike uh, sort of manner. And it is sort of a position that I like to kind of stake out about um, kind of fighting for a bit of behavior that is not so controlled with your frontal lobe. So like sort of uh, uh, fighting for the baseness. So sort of saying, suggesting that it's perhaps uh, them behaving like children is also what saves them. It's sort of through the paint that they are kind of uh, finally um, sort of exercised, let's say, of, of their inner sort of issues, uh, or my <laughs> inner issues, <laughs> I should say. But when, when do you decide that uh, the topic or the theme of the series is really investigated? I when mean, do I decide? Yeah, yeah, I mean, the, the cake yeah. man consists of, I, I as think you said, I trust the imagination. Yeah. You know, I kind of, um, you know, you look at one work, oh, well, what if this happened this turn? And, and then what if the light, for instance, there are some light paintings here where there are flashlights and there are different paintings that come from that. And so I thought, okay, what if they have the flash in their mouth and they're lit up? And what if... The so ultimately, when there's no uh, what if, mm. uh, it stops. So I guess the word what if is quite important as a creative tool in the studio of just running with all the possible what ifs and really... Um, answering all of them, or doing all of them, in a way. This connection to uh, the stage of childhood is also interesting. Uh, it, um, I think, uh, affects the atmosphere uh, of a lot of your, especially maybe the smaller paintings, because there is also different... You will see in the exhibition there is very large paintings and there is very small paintings. Yes. And in the very small paintings you come closer to these male characters. Uh, sometimes they appear in quite claustrophobic spaces and it, sometimes it can even feel like you almost observe them s through a surveillance camera, I yeah. think. Yeah. Uh, and in the larger paintings uh, they often appear in larger groups and there is also an interesting relationship between the individual and the, gr in, in, and the group where in the larger paintings the individual somehow um, uh, dissolves into a mass or yes. gradually different stages in different paintings but there is um, 
Yeah, maybe you can comment yes, on that. Yes, absolutely. I mean, this idea of um, how, th so being interested in figuration, then you're interested in how the, the individual versus the mass. And as you said, how the individual m becomes an abstraction in a mass cluster. And I think in general that happens in our daily sort of, uh, and what is mass behavior? What is uh, a collective energy versus an individual energy? Um, the small works, in a way, I feel they're very much about intimate space. They're about interiors, and so there's always a line defining a room or something, and and one or two or three people. Um, and the larger ones are in a kind of a non-space, a kind of a, what you could say a spiritual space, uh, spiritual in quotation marks, um, where they're uh, a, a sort of dissolving, and it's a, it's a bit of a play also with their ego, so they're no longer recognizable. Um, I also, uh, sorry. No, please, yeah. please. Uh, in the larger paintings, it's, uh, it's, it's more obvious or also your um, reaction almost against the modern American art history, basically. The, yeah, the minimalism and the abstract expressionism. Uh, uh, we were uh, having a tour this morning uh, with the museum um, staff and we were talking a lot about um, about this actually, mm. and and how the in painting uh, you you are as a painter very aware of the history of painting because it's the oldest sort of form of one of the oldest forms of art and it carries with it a very strong kind of um, language. So every drip, every mark, every dot has its own history. That if you know the language, you read that as a as a language. And so in the large works, um, having been educated uh, in the U.S. Uh, for for painting. I was very much reacting to the kind of American atmosphere of a kind of the regurgitation, let's say, of uh, abstraction where it comes back over and over and uh, the kind of desire maybe, um, I mean, I've been living in America since 1994 and I feel the, that there is such a heavy um, level of sort of, I wouldn't say propaganda, but heavy level of um, um, I feel that the sort of the atmosphere um, favors things that are a little bit much more removed. So there's a sort of a running away from having a position. And um, so I wanted to react, react against this. And so the large paintings are very much about the figures infiltrating a kind of a minimalist uh, philosophy of painting. So you, I, the, there's one painting, it's called Morrisman, and it's very much a, in conversation with Morris Lewis paintings. And they're literally infiltrated by these men. Um, they're sort of taken over. And uh, Smiley as well. Mm -hmm. And there's some of them that are called Piss Rainbow or something. There's a real staining of this sort of Daniel Buren stripes, you know, and, uh, and um, that, that perfect modern sort of elevated space. Um, it's a lot about sort of turning the high low and turning the low high, kind of uh, painting sun worship, for instance. You have, um, it is called sun worship, so there is the idea of really worshipping something, but that thing is made from, let's say, the lowest part of the human experience, from the urine, uh, and they make a sun and they, they worship it. Just to, I was... If we jump back a little bit again to the first room that you will enter in the exhibition, I mentioned, or we mentioned, the series of cake men. There is, and those works we have mixed with other works where you see um, these men camouflaging themselves, actually, or some of the men are painting others in camouflage painting. Yep dazzling camouflage. Would you like to say something about that? Absolutely. Series I'm that sure in the audience, um, you, some, some of you would know dazzle ships, this phenomenon of the dazzle ships of the, 19, of the early 1900s, the, the War War I um, phenomenon, uh, where th there's a French artist that uh, came to the British army and th they suggested that they should paint the warships uh, with sort of very, very Bauhaus, very modern colors. So they would confuse the front of the ship with the back of the ship because there were no radars there. And, and the way that uh, you would m know how to bomb the enemy ships is by measuring the, knowing how, where the front was. So the British Army agrees to this, and they in fact paint a lot of the warships, these crazy, amazing um, sort of Bauhaus and these modern colors. And th the soldiers hated it, of course. They, they hated having to go to battle in these very clownish, sort of crazy colored boats. 
And it, there aren't many remains of it there because they, it's, it was not successful. Many of them did get bombed and they sadly fall. But I felt this uh, marriage of the military and some artistic notion quite fascinating. And, um, and also this idea of the, you know, if you are using a camouflage, are you the victim? Are you hiding? Or do you want to perpetrate something? And are you the actual, like, an aggressor? So this confusion between being the aggressor or the victim was quite interesting um, to me. So I thought the, the men uh, maybe are interested in kind of becoming dazzled and, and kind of uh, using this tactic. It's almost very much also about paint again and sort of them becoming implicated with how I paint. And in fact, I'm dazzling them ultimately with my action. So it's, uh, it's implicated to my own activity in a sense. Mm -hmm. I think this is interesting and uh, and something that sort of I see in all of your work uh, that and that also becomes quite puzzling as a view uh, for, for the viewer because on the one hand side oh <laughs> so sorry sorry <laughs> your ahead, work you. or in fact your men uh, interact with Western art history or American abstraction and minimalism. Yeah. On the other hand, I feel that um, your work is also very politically loaded and and it can easily, different works can easily evoke associations to different kinds of global power structures, but also real events of war and assertion of power in our near contemporary, or uh, in our near history. Yeah, absolutely. And so that when you look at your work, uh, you you can easily feel as a viewer that you understand or you see something and then in the next moment you're pulled in a different direction. And it's somehow this uh, pulling of the in different directions make you uh, very aware also of your own perception of what you see and why do I see what I see and, and, and you become uncomfortably aware of how, how we all tend to fill in what we see, like we see what we expect to see and uh, very much dependent on images circulating in the media uh, about the background we bring with us when we encounter the work. But this sort of, uh, yeah, this which I feel is so present in your work that on the one hand side the, the sort of dialogue with art history but at the same time a very strong dialogue with social political issues of you know, everyday life in a way. Yeah. Uh, absolutely, and I mean, I would, I would. Um, this goes back to the idea of language again, because I think uh, the art history part of it is also extremely political. You know, I mean, I think it, uh, it's, you know, the the work you make as an artist is your political position. So the work that they were making in the 70s, the abstraction work. I mean, this. Uh, this, this development of an American painting language in relation to Europe, let's say, it was a, it was a huge political movement that was much about identity building then. So, uh, not to dis but I think they work in that uh, on different levels, that mm -hmm. they aren't just from like history books, that they really, even art history is political history, in a sense. Um, yeah, and I think... Um, yeah, so, so absolutely that the work you make is sort of your political position at any given time. And as an artist, you're staking that position. But it is, the art history language is its own language, which is not um, shareable with anyone. Yeah. And we were speaking again earlier today about how you, uh, when you see a painting, I think right now we're so um, used to seeing filmic images, which is one scene and then the next scene and the next scene. So now we're kind of used to seeing a movement, even if we're just looking at a painting, that you do fill in uh, the next array of movements. And this is quite a funny thing that the painting has to sort of work against or work in relation to the contemporary brain of how it's no longer. I think like Matisse said once that he doesn't even ride in cars because he doesn't want to see things that fast in a car. Imagine what his eye was used to. Um, uh, I was, I was going to bring in the idea of the animations, in mm -hmm. a sense that the animations uh, have allowed me to fill in the, the, the sequence myself, so that's not to leave it completely to the viewer and allow movement within the paintings, um, in a sense. And no, yeah. uh, I must, it became very serious now, if people haven't seen the, 
the exhibition, and I, yeah. <laughs> I must say that the it's very the, the hu humor <laughs> is a big part right. of yes. your work yes. as well, and uh, it connects also to Joa what she said about political topics because it's it can it's be satirical. a p political satire. Right. So, but um, I'm thinking about the the Enema series, for example. Right. Yeah. <laughs> How do you say animal series in, in Swedish? You uh, have to do that. Yes. Lavemangs serien. Well, you're welcome to say it. Yeah. <laughs> Just if you didn't know. <laughs> you know? <laughs> oh. Yeah, and, and here I think uh, in that series and also in the Jin series, which yeah. is one of your latest ones, you see how the, the men really look inwards. Yes. And they're, yeah, they're pulling out their intestines or they're, they are sitting waiting for their own shit to come out. You, oh, yeah. Yes. yes. No comment. <laughs> Can I say and no comment? <laughs> no, it's true. It's that the humor is yeah. a is a very sort of um, absolutely an, an important aspect of how it goes hand in hand with the idea of the play, as the, the most serious things are uh, can be very playful and can be actually released and discussed through humor. And I think that's sort of the, the function of jokes culturally, is that they allow you to even get to know your own subconscious. In a way, if we tell a joke, half of us might find it funny and some of us will not, and that tells about our own uh, individual positions. So, um, in a way, humor is constructed to be able to release, in a way, your subconscious and to reveal it. You know, what you find funny is quite problematic sometimes, and it quite could reveal something about you. Um, and uh, yeah, the Enema series was a way I was thinking about, it's sort of also analogous to art production sometimes, is where you're sort of waiting for creativity and maybe it is ultimately just that. It's the stuff of our bodies, then it's not um, the prettiest stuff sometimes, or sometimes it is. But the, the animal paintings are maybe the pinkest paintings in the room, so mm. don't be afraid of them. <laughs> yes. But we were talking also earlier about that um, in several of the earlier, s earlier series, it is as if the men, in different way, um, uh, act in r relationship to an outer force, yes. like maybe an enemy or an eye, uh, just looking. Yeah. yeah. Whereas in the series that you mentioned, Andreas, also the series of Jin, uh, the man starts to look more into themselves and, and starts to sort of be aware of the forces that uh, guide their behavior or control their behavior, control rather. Uh, so maybe you can say something about the Jin series and, and about yeah. the Jins. Yeah, I was um, thinking a lot about... Um, Somehow, uh, I read an essay by Pierre Klasowski, and it was called On the Collaboration of Demons on a Work of Art. And Klasowski was Baltus's brother, and he was very active post-World War II in kind of um, discussing, some, bringing some old theories back up and sort of... In, in this particular essay, he, he talks about this sort of 14th century ideology that um, works of art, uh, the really key ones, that demons and angels are intermediaries between the artist and the gods. And so the demons and the angels help the, the artist in actually giving the work of art a soul. So I thought, well, that's fabulous. I mean, how wonderful, you know. And, um, it really reminded me a lot of this sort of folklore mythology of uh, this idea of the jinn, uh, which is in sort of um, Iranian um, uh, sort of landscape. And this uh, jinn idea is um, that it's sort of, yeah, there are parallel universe for these demons and angels and jinns, and they live amongst you or with you, and they are the other. So they're kind of like uh, the daemon, the second. Um, and I was really interested in kind of imagining that you're summoning it up uh, somehow to, for, for the studio. But somehow when I was imagining it, it, it seemed to come from the inside as opposed to from, as you say, the outside. So to find the jinn or to find this um, other, other force, uh, the figures start really digging in in the in in the in the inner sa space, uh, as you'll see. Um, there is um, there are a few paintings also that uh, I was sort of showing. I was thinking a lot about skin, and the skin is a way of kind of it's the only way that it's supposed to be the way that we are able to touch each other, and all of our organs are in the way of that. But in a way, they've also become a way. Of, they've they've become 
prisons for, let's say, the id or your real self with all the socialization. Um, so there are a few paintings where you see uh, little men, little sort of more maybe uh, troublesome men uh, inside the bodies of these other men. And um, yeah, well, actually, since you mentioned that, that uh, this is a work on paper that you mentioned, yes. where you see these men. They actually have prison cells balls, in their balls, yeah. Balls. Bars. Oh, bars. Bars. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> they have sort of. It's, it looks like a prison cell in yeah. in their stomach, yeah. and, and inside there is other men's. Yes. Yeah. Uh, but there is also yeah. So maybe you can say also s about different kinds of men or different groupings of men uh, in your show. Or, or yeah, absolutely. Um, and uh, how they interact with each other. From from the um, one of the forces from 2006, I think it's. I was very much also reacting to the idea of the stereotypical image of a Middle Eastern man that is in the sort of Western context and wanting to kind of complicate that. So a lot of the men at the beginning of the, of the when you enter do have this more kind of Eastern look and I was very much reacting to a kind of um, an American environment of how that image exists uh, in our culture. And yeah, wanting to kind of let it have other um, energies, let's say, on how other possibilities. Uh, as you go on later, there are other figures. There are, I think Johan said, pinkish figures, <laughs> pinkish men, or so forth. Yeah. Well, then I realized they were not pink at all, but anyhow. But yeah. that's how you saw them in yourself. <laughs> but um, So the, 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 the sort of idea of the men has, has become more complicated, I guess. Um, and those other men have they have the have the bars. Yeah, the I other men. Let people yeah. experience it. Yeah, yeah. Well, you mentioned something. That I they did are mention it. Somehow <laughs> I feel it's we can. Yeah, yeah. Whatever. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and there are also not only grown men in the in the exhibition. There are a few babies. Some scandalous well. babies. I yes. think they've crossed some scandal in the uh, Swedish press. These babies. Yes. You guys want to take that? <laughs> <laughs> Should we? Um, Should we take that? No, you I all know the the story about this. No. I don't yeah. know. It's, uh, it's I it think could it's be maybe yeah. It, it, it's it's just interesting to note. I think that there are uh, because usually one tend to describe your artistic universe as populated exclusively by, by men. By right. men. Right. But there are this appearance of a few babies, which is quite intriguing. I think. And maybe it should not be only yeah. in this particular work that that has been circulating in the media and has caused a, sure. a, a lot of thought and discussion. I'm sure, uh, but there is also an animation next to that work uh, where we see a baby. Um, being quite violent inside a, ho a hospital. And yeah. I don't know if you want to say uh, anything well, about the appearance the of the I'll baby. I'll just mention the animation yeah. series. Um, the few animations are, co are part of an accident series where it's about strangers hurting strangers. So you have uh, this baby in a hospital um, doing something a bit surprising to a patient and you have another guy in a metro um, doing something else, which I won't, if you haven't seen it, I don't want to explain it, you'll see it. It's quite self-explanatory. Um, but maybe the heading should be men, babies, and men behaving as babies instead of yes, just yeah. the men. But and actually, in those where we were talking about this morning, that one could also see the babies as uh, as as the characters with power Absolutely. in this particular work. Absolutely. So they are not necessarily uh, as vulnerable and expo exposed as you know small babies. You might imagine. Yeah, it would be. Yeah. I feel it's a natural place for us to in uh, include the audience or questions or include the audience or, or invite them to see the show. Yeah. Please. You know, I've had a few group. I've been invited for a few group shows, which have uh, some of the animations have been shown and some drawings simply because of the shipping um, complications. So they have been shown, but nothing close to this kind of overview. Um, I've lectured in universities in Iran a few times and I've shown slides to students quite openly without censoring much. Um, uh, yeah, so it's, it's been, th th there is some, uh, and that, that was, th there, there was a good reception of that. I was quite, I didn't know what to expect myself as I don't live there permanently anymore. I'm not sure about the environment necessarily. But no, the humor certainly was quite, um, um, yeah, communicative. So yeah, it has been. 
please. Please, of course. Just curious about. Uh, just curious about you. <laughs> yeah, <of course. laughs> uh, yeah, the name is new. I don't know. Maybe it's, uh, I can tell you. Of course, I. I was born in Tehran, in Iran, until, and I stayed there, I, I sort of learned how to paint uh, and calligraphy at age seven, eight, uh, from a very, very sweet teacher, um, Hussein Bakhtayeri. And I left Iran in 94 um, and came to Oregon, where I studied political science in a university there. And, um, and I got a painting scholarship to also study painting, and I thought I would just sort of use the scholarship but still do my other, um, I wasn't married to the idea of becoming a painter, I was very practical, so I sort of didn't allow myself to really go that dreamy. And my, um, uh, my mother was extremely supportive. You know, she said, you know, just do what you want. I'll give you 400 bucks a month. You can live off on that and you can just do whatever you want. And so she was extremely supportive, which is quite, I think was quite key for me. And, um, I went to, afterwards, I, so I have a political science background, and I, but I went to Yale afterwards, which was uh, quite um, formative in the sort of East Coast, West Coast experience of America was quite interesting. Um, and uh, after Yale, I've um, traveled around Europe. I lived in Holland for four years, um, and now I live in Los Angeles. So I've been sort of finding different places uh, for experience, yeah, but um, yeah. Sure, but in a way, I think it's good that the question come up because I think your very global background and also the fact that you have studied political science before you study art, it all comes through in your work yeah, in a very interesting interest, yeah, way. Yeah. Um, not to least also about uh, how we um, all construct stereotypes of each other, and and uh, which is very much by what this work that has given the title of the exhibition RIP Image is about, the sort of wish to tear that apart Completely. and free yourself from it, Completely. which is easier imagined than done. <laughs> yes, please. In some, of your in some of your pictures, it goes very bad for the man. Can you say something more about that? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll just say they're paintings, <laughs> so it can be. <laughs> In, in the space of paintings, um, I think it's a good thing about uh, art that it can get quite bad for whoever it is, and it's still okay, uh, I hope. Uh, I hope, yeah, it's a painting. But, um, yeah, do you think so? I mean, it's, it's interesting. That is, it, is it quite bad? <laughs> is it quite bad? I, I was asked by one critic if I, as a man, was offended by a yeah. work. Yeah. And were you? No, I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I think it is subjective, and I think yeah. I can imagine... Um, I mean, one could also see them as having some quite fun in some of them, but there is this, with, as with, the, with children, actually, when they play, that it can be exciting and fun, and there, but there can be a fine line between, you know, the innocent e excitement and, and, and sort of... A, sort of sadistic excitement right. that can then also turn into real violence. And I think you have that kind of unsettling... Yes. Um, but I think in general, the in, the, in the world, it's quite difficult. I mean, it's quite bad in general. And, and I mean, if you, it's just this just, just week. I mean, we can pick from any press some seriously horrific moments for men, women, whatever. And, um, but no, I mean, I think it's, your read is quite true. I mean, there are some moments that it does get quite... Uh, difficult for the characters, but um, somehow, um, uh, somehow in, in a way that, um, yeah, that's in, in the language of, in, in, in the context of the whole thing, I hope that's the dimension of it and not th the only thing, right? But, but I think, you know, what's, what's like a very difficult um, action for someone is like the other person's really sexy weekend, you know, so what, what could be seen as quite difficult for one character is very kinky for the other character. So it's also extremely subjective what is a difficult position to be in, right? So I would say that's our range. Please. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I won't elaborate. <laughs> it'll, it'll get, it just will get worse, you know. <laughs>
<laughs> Should we? Oh, yeah, there is another, another question. Uh, you have been, been around a lot in the world, but uh, it seems the men you are painting, they are mostly belonging to your childhood. From your childhood, I mean, they are. It, it also, I see it a little bit like a critic of your society, where you come from. Yes, they do fluctuate. They kind of, um, absolutely, I think it is a complicated relationship that I have as, as a kind of female artist living in the West, in that I'm extremely critical of many dimensions of uh, that environment. But sometimes they are also sort of victims of uh, another environment. And in that space, I'm also kind of coddling them. Uh, while um, becoming critics, critical of them. So there's a complicated relationship that, our, it's, it's, it's a complication within myself, that in moments um, there's a lot of frustration. And as I said, th there are spaces where I feel very frustrated being omitted from um, that are purely kind of male spaces. So I, they, they get worked out through this, uh, these paintings. And um, absolutely there's a lot of criticism. And, and in some moments they get flipped, you know, with like rip image. I, I can understand and I sympathize and I allow them to have that space. So this is the kind of, uh, I think, um, complication of the reading, mm -hmm. is that the relationship that I have with the subject is not um, one-dimensional. But then one can also, if for a series of work like Desselman, for example, one can also associate to, you know, hooliganism or, you know, football supporters painting themselves and, and going into this kind of primal orgies of group belonging. So there Absolutely, is, yeah. it's a criticism of the sort of, uh, let's say, the, the machismo in, yeah. in society, not exclusively in the background that I come from. Yeah. I mean, I think if I was, let's say, from Mexico or from Italy, they could all as well be men from that space. So it's not exclusive to any one region. Should we see the show? <laughs> okay, thank you very thank much. Thank you, welcome.